Today's video is sponsored by PC Case Gear, Australia's premier online PC store. Whenever I'm in the need for a product, they're the first place I turn to, and I've been a customer of theirs for years now. So I really can attest to the quality of their service. I value their broad product range, competitive pricing, customer support, and easy to navigate website. With two decades of experience, I know I can trust PC Case Gear to look after you guys as well as they look after me. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. My head injury is healing. If you want to hear a little bit about how that happened, go back and check out part one of our Q&A series. Bit of a stupid mistake on my part. But anyway, today we're perhaps not looking at the newest monitor to hit the market, but it's definitely one that you guys have been requesting a review of for quite some time, especially from some of our Patreon members. It's the Acer Nitro VG271P. And I totally get why you'd be interested. 1920 by 1080 resolution, 144 hertz IPS panel at 27 inches with adaptive sync and a touch of display HDR4. 400 on the side. Surprisingly, 1080p 144Hz IPS monitors have only just started to come out onto the market. You might have thought they've been around for a while given we've had TN and VA options for ages now, but nope, people have been requesting these sorts of panels for years and years, and I believe only now in 2019 or perhaps the very early parts of 2018 have panel makers like AU Optronics delivered the goods. So why are 1080p 144Hz IPS monitors so sought after? Well, part of that comes down to why you'd want an IPS monitor specifically rather than TN or VA. Generally speaking, IPS offers the best performance in areas like colors, viewing angles, and uniformity while still delivering great response times. For gamers, this means you can have great motion handling and great colors in the one package rather than having to choose one or the other like when opting for TN or VA. IPS may not have the absolute best response times or the best contrast ratios, but the balance you get from this technology often sees it sit right in that perfect sweet spot. Given IPS's excellent qualities for gaming, it tends to be a more premium monitor category, and I think panel manufacturers haven't wanted to make 1080p 144Hz IPS panels because these days 1080p is more of an entry-level product, but I think there's plenty of reason to want a 1080p high refresh IPS monitor. You might not have the GPU horsepower to run at higher resolutions, but you still want that high refresh experience. You simply might not want to upgrade to 1440p, or you might want a gaming grade IPS for a lower price. The cost factor is important. You know, as far as 1080p monitors go, IPS 144Hz variants like the VG271P, you know, they aren't the cheapest going around, priced at $250 to $300 for a 27-incher. But 1440p options are more expensive, typically going for around $400 or above. Not everyone has that sort of budget, so dropping down to 1080p can be worthwhile. Enough about why you'd want a 1080p 144Hz IPS monitor. If you've clicked on this review, you're probably already interested for whatever reason. So let's get into the Acer Nitro VG271P. For a monitor that uses a premium IPS panel, the build quality leaves a bit to be desired. It's very plasticky all around from the stand with red highlights to the simple rear panel with a small hint of gamer style. It's not shoddily built. Everything fits together well and it seems pretty sturdy, but for a higher price 1080p display, I think a bit more metal and a bit less plastic, especially for the stand, would have been warranted. The other concern I have here is with the stand's adjustability. We're only getting tilt adjustment here. Again, for a premium tier monitor, I think it really needs to include something height adjustable. ASUS's competing monitor, the VG279Q, is height adjustable, but if you want that with the VG271P, well, you'll need to buy a vase mount, which adds to the overall cost. I do appreciate the inclusion of a directional toggle for controlling the on-screen display. Ace's menus have been some of the most easy to navigate, and the feature set here is good without being great. There's a backlight strobing mode for added clarity, seems to work well in my limited testing, plus a few standard features like cheat crosshairs, black boosting modes, and a blue light filter. Inputs are standard, two HDMI 2.0 ports and DisplayPort, plus there are some really crappy built-in speakers. Bizarrely, HDR functionality is only available when you use the HDMI input, at least with my test setup that includes an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti. However, I had no trouble using adaptive sync with both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, no flickering or issues like that, so at least that's a positive. If you've made it this far into the review, here's where things start to get really interesting because we're about to dive into the response time data. Not to spoil the next few minutes, but there's a bit of an unexpected and unfortunate twist with this monitor. Before I get into that though, let's look at the three overdrive modes that are available 
available. The first is the off mode, probably not something most people will be using given its slow response time performance with an average of 11.57 milliseconds. The idea with these overdrive modes is to completely cut off overshoot just in case you find the inverse ghosting unusable, but it's not a common use case for gaming. Next we step up to the normal mode, a slight improvement to performance here, now we're averaging an 11.02 millisecond greater gray response, although with just 20% of transitions falling within 1 millisecond of the refresh window at 144Hz, this mode isn't suitable for gaming either. It's simply too slow, and while a slight improvement over the off mode is nice, Realistically, this mode could have served as an off mode given, you know, its lack of overshoot. Here we have the extreme mode. Ah, nice. Now we get some good IPS level performance that is well suited to gaming. We have a 5.62 millisecond greater gray average, which is about what I expected from this type of monitor, and that allows for 89% of transitions to fall within the required threshold for a true 144 Hz experience. And with decent dark level performance as well, we're getting performance typically better than a VA, although some 1080p VAs are also quite strong in this area. Overshoot is well managed in this mode, it's not elite level and there are some transitions with large amounts of overshoot in the bottom right corner which represents our bright level transitions, but these are hard to notice most of the time. And our overall error average is just 3.7% with only 7.3% of transitions above 15% overshoot. Decent figures here that are within our tolerances. So the extreme mode is definitely the way to go with this monitor and delivers pretty good performance. But, you know, here's the twist. So far you've seen the extreme mode being the only mode that's really suited to gaming. Well, unfortunately, most gamers won't actually be able to use this mode in practice. That's because you can't change the overdrive mode when adaptive sync is enabled and activated. And the mode which it defaults to while adaptive sync is functioning is the normal mode, not extreme. Adaptive Sync is a crucial feature on this monitor and any other gaming monitor, especially now as both Nvidia and AMD GPU owners can use the feature. But with the VG271P, you'll have to make a choice between a smooth variable refresh rate or good response time performance. It's very bizarre to have to make this choice. Basically, every other monitor on the market allows you to change the overdrive mode regardless of whether Adaptive Sync is enabled. However, this isn't the first Acer monitor I've tested where overdrive is grayed out in the Adaptive Sync mode, so I don't think this is a bug or a one-off. It seems to be something that is deliberately designed into some of their monitors, especially in the mid-range tiers. Not sure why, it might be some technical limitation with the hardware they're using, but to me, this is a pretty fundamental flaw. Had Acer made the extreme mode the default option when Adaptive Sync is enabled, this would have all been fine, or if the extreme mode was renamed to normal and there was an even faster but worse performing extreme mode, that also would have been fine. But to only deliver an 11 millisecond greater gray average with Adaptive Sync enabled is poor and really hurts this product's value as a gaming monitor. It's especially disappointing when I know good performance is possible with that extreme mode is just locked away behind a grayed out menu item. To make matters worse, I don't see how Acer can fix this problem after the fact. There is no USB port on this monitor or other user accessible port that could be used to deliver a firmware update, so I don't think it's possible to just roll out an update and fix it. In fact, I really don't know what else to say about this, it's just an unusual problem to face. Our comparison charts of every monitor tested with Adaptive Sync enabled, that's because as a PC gamer you're going to have this feature enabled, and as you can see from where the VG271P sits on the chart, being forced to use the normal mode is catastrophic for performance relative to other IPS panels. Had we been able to use the extreme mode here, it would have sit smack bang in the middle of the chart as we'd expect from an IPS gaming monitor, but configured as gamers would actually use this monitor? Yeah, performance is poor. It's similar as we move throughout the rest of these charts. We're getting worse than VA level performance from this monitor, and you can just so easily see where this monitor would have sit had the overdrive option been unlocked. Sure, error performance is excellent with the normal mode, but we're miles away from running this panel at its limits, so it's almost irrelevant how it doesn't exhibit any overshoot because the response times just aren't quite up to scratch. Performance is slightly better at 60 hertz, but let's be honest, a 10 millisecond average from this type of IPS is still poor. And yeah, I guess at 60 hertz you could disable adaptive sync if you were just really wanting to run at 60 hertz, but again, yeah, I really wish that mode was available. From here on, it's actually pretty good news for the VG271P, which perhaps makes this overdrive mode debacle even more disappointing. Input lag from processing is below one millisecond, so the only reason the overall input lag from this monitor sits at the bottom of the charts is because of its slow response times. Power consumption is very good, the lowest I've tested for a 27 inch monitor, although most of the time these differences are negligible, I mean a few watts here and there isn't going to make much of a difference on your yearly power bill. 
Factory calibration is also very good, which is a big surprise from a gaming monitor. This is only an sRGB capable panel, so those hoping for a wide gamut IPS experience might be a bit disappointed. But to me, this is a non-issue as non-HDR gaming is designed for sRGB displays. Out of the box, the big thing Acer gets right is the white balance. Rather than being tinted red or blue like we often see, the VG271P gets very close to the ideal 6500K white point for sRGB with a reasonably flat CCT curve. Gamma isn't quite right, it doesn't perfectly follow the yellow sRGB line here, but it's not bad, and overall this leads to a sub 2.0 delta E average in grayscale, which is above average for default performance. Saturation results are very good, an average delta E of 2.03 is right on the threshold we look for, which is a delta E below 2.0, generally indicating strong color accuracy. Greens and reds are a little looser than the other colors, but this is much better than your typical gaming monitor. Color checker falls away a little bit to a 2.6 delta E average, but this is still better than most monitors that sit in that 3.0 to 4.0 range from the factory. In fact, if we look at this chart, the VG271P is right up near the top among gaming monitors, only beaten by some of the highest end products like the PG35VQ and Gigabyte KD25F. A few tweaks to the on-screen settings can improve performance slightly, bringing down delta E averages by a small amount across the board. It doesn't quite get our color checker numbers below a 2.0 average, we're going to need a calibrated ICC profile for that, but these are fantastic results from a sub $300 product. As for calibrated performance, no concerns here, we're getting our usual sub 1.0 numbers. If you're interested in testing this profile yourself, that's available for our Patreon members, although your results will vary due to natural panel variance and may not deliver the same accurate results as what you're seeing here. Brightness when calibrated is outstanding at 447 nits, which is well above what I think most users will require, but definitely suitable for those that game in really bright rooms during the day. The contrast ratio is also quite high for an IPS monitor. Of course, we're not getting the two to three times better performance like you'd see from a VA panel, but as far as IPS monitors go, it's a pretty outstanding result. Viewing angles are also excellent, which is no surprise from an IPS display. This is one of the key advantages you get with this type of monitor. Uniformity is also really strong. The entire central section holds up well, as do three of the four edges. It's only along the very top where I saw a bit of a drop off, but this is much better than your typical gaming display. What about HDR? Well, technically this monitor can accept HDR inputs, although only through the HDMI input, and it does come with Display HDR 400 certification, which makes sense given the monitor can output more than 400 nits of brightness, but realistically speaking, this monitor doesn't give you an HDR experience as it lacks two crucial features for HDR content playback. One of them is a local dimming backlight. You need this with an LCD monitor to deliver the high contrast ratios that are expected in HDR content. Normally we'd want at least a 50,000 to one contrast ratio within a single frame. This monitor can only provide 1200 to one as it has no local dimming. The other is a wider than sRGB color gamut, at least 125% sRGB for example, but this is only an sRGB capable panel, so it too fails this metric. I wouldn't buy this monitor for its HDR capabilities because frankly, the experience won't be much different than running this display at a high brightness level. It's not worth using, so I'd stick to just seeing this as an SDR product. Overall, the Acer Nitro VG271P is a frustrating monitor. There are all the hallmarks of a really good buy here. The panel is capable of very good response times, which is exactly what we want to see from a gaming grade IPS. It's not class leading, but it's definitely an improvement on some VA alternatives, while having other advantages like a flat panel and excellent viewing angles. On top of that, we are getting outstanding brightness, great contrast for an IPS type monitor, fantastic uniformity, and surprisingly strong color accuracy from the factory. Sure, it's only an sRGB display, but that's plenty even today for gaming. Additional features like a backlight strobing mode add to the overall package. And the best part could have been its price, which I believe is an MSRP of $300, but I've seen for as low as $250 through some retailers. In Australia, I've seen it for as low as $410, which I think, along with the $250 price in the US, is the perfect place for a 1080p 144Hz IPS monitor. Yeah, it's a premium on TN and VA options, but I think the quality of this panel justifies that additional cost. Unfortunately, everything unravels a bit for Acer here because of the catastrophic issue with the overdrive mode, a problem as simple as not allowing users to change to the optimal extreme mode when adaptive sync is enabled, takes this monitor from being something I could easily recommend to something I definitely cannot. Being stuck with normal overdrive when using adaptive sync, and let's be honest, all gamers want adaptive sync, takes this monitor from having IPS level performance to below VA level performance 
performance. And that's really not acceptable in my opinion. I mean, why would you pay more to get IPS level performance, but then not actually be able to get it in configurations gamers will use? There are some other concerns here, like a poor stand, cheap build quality, and non-existent HDR performance, but those are kind of insignificant compared to what I think is a major issue from a trivial oversight. And something that I can't see being fixed is there's really no mechanism to provide a firmware update outside of the factory. You could maybe just barely overlook this if Asus VG271P was the only 1080p 144Hz IPS monitor on the market, but it isn't. The ASUS VG279Q and LG 27GL650 exist, which I believe use the same panel as this Acer model, and going on some reviews I've seen don't have the same overdrive limitations. Typically, these monitors are a bit more expensive, but the LG model in particular is regularly on sale for below $300, and I feel the extra few dollars is worth it. In the end, a thoroughly disappointing product that I was pretty excited to check out after so many of you guys were asking me to take a look. It's rare that I can't recommend a product due to technical flaws. Most of the time, that could be compensated by a lower price, but I just don't feel that's possible here. Outside of a hardware revision, I think I'd probably just avoid the VG271P and grab one of its competitors. That's it for this one. As always, you can subscribe for more monitor reviews. We always appreciate the support of our Patreons who make videos like this popular. If you like our testing or find it useful, consider buying some merch like this t-shirt, got mugs as well, or signing up to our Patreon feed. That is another great way to support us. And I'll catch you in the next one.